uh, have your status uh, reevaluated. Okay. And can you tell me the phrase where it says, it appears that academic dishonesty did not occur? Uh, it, it says that, doesn't it? Where are you looking, sir? I'm in um, the first paragraph under this code section, student responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, fourth line down. In addition, it appears that academic, academic dishonesty did not occur. I see that. Okay, so it says that. So what was I put on warning of? Objection what? relevancy. I and, and okay, I'm going to go ahead and let him ask the question. Knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and let him answer the question as he sees it. I believe the issue was one of whether or not your conduct was appropriate as we, you and I, communicated regarding the paper. And I think uh, what was disturbing to me was uh, what I had raised the attention of the university about, and that was that your conduct seemed to, to be rather unusual in the way you handled yourself with respect to the paper. Like being a communist or something? Objection. Argumentative. If you're a communist, that'd be unusual, and so we need Sustained. to say academic Sustained. dishonesty investigation. Sustained. We don't like your conduct, Objection, so we're going to say Honor. academic dishonesty. Sustained. Is that what happened, Mark? Sustained. Let's ask the next question. Okay. Was this about academic dishonesty, or was this about conduct? I didn't bring the investigation, Zach. Okay, but you, you played some role in it, right? I turned over my emails. You turned over the emails one man sent you? That's correct. One man turned over some emails and another man sent him? That's correct. Okay. So, and then that brought forth an investigation that, that like, six years later, we're still rehashing, right, Mark? Objection. But you didn't have anything okay. to do with um, that. Right. It's sustained. Okay. So you don't know this, this investigation that you didn't bring, you were just kind of in the periphery, you don't know how it was resolved, you don't know what it was about, whether it was about academic dishonesty or whether it was about someone's conduct not being how you like it. Objection, Your Honor. It's First of all, mischaracterizing it, it's if testimony. If I had gold teeth and corn rolls, would you report Objection, my conduct as well? Objection, argumentative. Okay, sustained. Would you? Okay, I'm going to stop. Relevant. At this point, if you can't ask a proper question, I'm not going to allow you to cross-examine anymore. Okay. So, what am I being warned about? Objection. I, I did not write this letter. Formal letter of warning. I suggest if you're going to be involved in, in things okay. of this matter, Objection. you should take a little bit more interest in them. Okay. You know? He did not write the letter. Seems kind of reckless. Okay, what's the next question? Um, <clears throat> so did... Did, did you feel assaulted or threatened? Objection. Asked and answered. Asked and answered and okay. sustained. I see. I, I'll direct he did you not to write this letter. Exhibit. Okay. No more questions <laughs> on this letter. He didn't write it. You need to cross-examine the witness that wrote the letter. Okay. So no academic dishonesty occurred in this, in this matter? Is that correct? Is that what the final ruling was, Mr. Okay. Trotos? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let him answer this question. That you have pointed out to me, sir. That's yeah. correct. No academic. And so when I reported to the State Bar that the academic dishonesty investigation was resolved with a finding of no academic dishonesty, which is what I reported, that was true, right? Objection, speculation, beyond Stained. this witness's uh, beyond personal this, knowledge. Okay. This witness's knowledge. What's the next question? Um, Mr. Travis, the day papers were turned in, where were they turned in? They were turned in in class. As people left class, they came down and turned in the papers. In a box? Not in a box. On, on a desk? On a desk. On the podium you, sp you spoke from? Ob I Ob didn't speak from the podium. Where did, okay, where did you speak from? Where did you speak from? I always speak from the middle of the the uh, the classroom. I use the same classroom most semesters. Was there a lectern? There is a lectern, but I always speak in front of lectern. Okay. So the papers were turned in on a desk, right? That's correct. And who collected these papers? I did. Not not the student of yours who was in the class? No. And he didn't grade them for you either? No. Okay. Um...
And I'm talking about the one whose grades are mentioned on your website about how good he did in class. Objection. There's no, no student. Something that's it's not sustained. Okay, it's sustained. Summa it's sustained. Cum whatever. And okay, and the answer stricken as well as the question. Okay. So, so these papers were all turned in, and you collected them yourself, and you put them in your car? Objection. That's correct. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to okay. And do, allow it. Do you recall receiving a paper that had handwriting at top of it? <laughs> Zach, I've received many papers with handwriting on top of it. And that's uh, that not what I'm asking. For about. that class? No. For that class, you recall specifically that none of the papers in that pile had handwriting on top. I, I don't recall. What's the next question? Okay. Do you recall getting the paper that had a note written on the paper that said, I'm not turning this paper in digital copy because I don't want this paper posted on the class class's website, as you indicated you plan to do, for your firm's website, bolster it with students' papers from the class, oh. you know. Do you recall that? I don't. Do you recall telling the class that you were going to post their papers on your firm's website? I don't recall telling anybody that. I do recall that I said if there were good papers, we may do that. But I don't ever uh, make a representation that we're going to do something specifically without ever having read the papers. What's the next question? Okay, so, and you didn't have a, did you have a class website for this class? There was a class website for and this would, class. would papers be posted on that? There were no post papers posted on that website. Okay, but did you tell the class that they would be? No, I didn't. But you said it's possible. Of course, that may have been possible. It did. Without their permission, you'd post? No, Zach, not without their permission. You remember me asking you that in class? No, I don't. Okay. Um, so you'd have to get their permission before posting them? That would be common courtesy. Just common courtesy? That's correct. You could do it if you wanted to. I, Zach, is there a point to your question here? Um, I'm asking the questions. That's you just answer them, okay? You, you certainly are. Yeah. Um, so it's just common courtesy. You could take a student's work product and post it on your, your, your firm's website if you wanted without asking them. No, I don't believe that's the case. But you said before it was just common courtesy whether or not you did it. On the, on the class website. On the class, so on the class website you could do it. You could post it on the World Wide Web of students' papers without asking them. Objection. Relevancy, Your Honor. Sustain. Next question. Okay. No more questions um, in this do area. Do you recall getting a paper, the day papers were turned in, with a note atop of it that said, I'm writing my Social Security number on here rather than my name because that has been the practice in all my law school courses was to have blind grading. Zach, I don't remember that. You don't remember getting a paper like that? No, I don't. Okay. Was there blind grading on this course? Yes, there was. Why do you say that if people's names were written atop the paper? Objection, relevancy. I'm going to go ahead and let him explore this for one more question. Uh, people could turn in their papers either with their name on it or with a, a Social Security number on it or with a student ID number on it. The paper gets graded. All of those grades then get turned into the law school. The law well, school the assigns it. Could let turn him it continue. In. Okay. I was just asking if there was blind grading, and he's telling me about what he he's doing. He can give an explanation. Yeah. So if a, if a student can put their name on it, then it's not. If, if, say, the student who worked for you put his name on it, <laughs> if he could, then it's not blind grading. You're making a fundamental mistake, and the fundamental Please. mistake was the, the exams were part of the grade, 60 percent, 40 percent was a paper. I don't know who gets what in terms of the exam grades, and all I can do is essentially say on this particular portion of the class that I graded, I don't grade the exams, the exams are typically graded uh, at the law school level if they are multiple choice, and if they're an essay then I grade those, but there's never a name on them. So I could never... It's always blind grading, right? Pardon me? It's always blind grading, right? Always. Except for your papers in the class with your student who's your employee. Absolutely the not. the papers have people's names on them, if they want. Abs absolutely not. Right? No. Well, okay, explain to me, because that sounds exactly like what you've been saying. Objection, Your Honor. That's stained. It's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. We are getting far afield. It shows Mr. Trotis is flip-flopping on what he's saying. It's irrelevant. Okay.
Have, do you have any knowledge about this paper that I turned in? I'm talking about the hard copy of the day I was turning class. Have you heard anything from any of your employees or anybody in the world about, whoa, you know, anything? Maybe we found that paper behind a file cabinet or remember that time you... Okay, that's the question. Have you heard? Do you have, have you heard? No. Okay, what's You're the next question? You're swearing that under oath? Yes. Okay. Um, and before, when you were describing that you turned in th these emails, the sole substance of our communications, and uh, this is at, to somebody to start an academic and dishonesty investigation, right? And um, Zach, I didn't know they were going to start an academic investigation. Okay. I didn't think the emails were appropriate conduct from a student who should have maintained a copy of his paper, who should have essentially kept a copy, who when I offered to retrieve the electronic file from his destroyed hard drive and offered to pay for it, Objection, instead, Your instead Honor, of doing that, treated me, going into treated stuff. me If he wants to go into this stuff about offering to do something, Conflict, which he would later Conflict, withdrew I'm, the offer. Uh, you know what? I'm stopping your cross-examination, period. You are, it's over with in terms of Mr. Uh, uh, Trotis because we're not getting anywhere and you don't seem to know how to ask a proper question or a relevant question. <laughs> so, um, I have is, somewhere to go with this, I, I assure you. I'm, I'm, it, have I not brought up some, some interesting points? No. No, none of these have none. been interesting. None. Okay. None whatsoever. So I will go ahead and allow you one or two more questions and then we need to wrap this up. Okay. You graded the papers? I did. Did anyone else have access to the papers? No. No one else read them or helps you grade them? No. Okay. Do you still have those papers? Or were they turned back to students? Don't know whether they were kept or turned back to students. Would it surprise you if I was told nobody got their papers back? Wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Um, so that's common. That happens. Fairly common. Okay. Happens at a lot of institutions. Okay. And when when you turned these over, you indicated that you had no discussions about the the um, the investigation that was to take place, but you had problems with my conduct. Um, and from that, we got an academic dishonesty investigation. I think the academic honesty investigation really grew out of the unusual circumstances of asking for the electronic copy of your paper, you asserting that your hard drive was destroyed, me offering to can you show us. Can on, you show this you, in the finished. testimony and the statements where he you, wants to go if into you this? Interrupt asking. anymore? I am not going to allow you to ask any more questions. Okay, so be warned. He's not answering any questions either. He's not so giving you really the answer. The you, he's not giving you the answer you want, which is different. Okay. So if you could continue with your answer. Sure. Assuming that you wrote the paper as you represented you did and that he had written it on the hard drive as you represented you did, I offered to retrieve it for you. You objected to that because you didn't want other files to be accessed on your, your hard drive. I was at an impasse. There's nothing I can do at that point. At that point in time, when I've made every effort to try to help you get a grade in the class to get you graduated, but you refuse to give me the opportunity to even help you do that, I had no alternative but to turn it over to the uh, academic administration and say, "Tell me what to do." Okay. Tell me what do you, you like recall to do? having a discussion about? You would only pay for to have that one particular file retrieved. I, I recall there was communication between you and I about whether or not you were going to have me reconstruct your entire hard drive. And I suggested to you that that was not really what was appropriate. What was appropriate was for me to help you with this. Do you saying that all the Wait, will you let him finish the question, okay? Well, I'm, I'm warning you. What was appropriate was for me to help you retrieve this paper, which one was the subject. The one file, right? The, the, you would pay for the one file to be retrieved. Do you know of any companies that will retrieve only one file from Objection a corrupted hard drive? Objection, relevancy. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to allow you to ask, answer that question. I'm going to uh, allow that question. We, we work with a number of companies. I'm sure we, I'm sure we could have found somebody You're who would help sure us. You're sure it can be done? I'm sure that we could find people who would give us uh, a, a reasonable price to retrieve a, a single file off of a hard drive. Okay, because the okay, what's the question? Are you aware that all the companies I contacted said that couldn't be done? Objection, speculation. Do you recall me saying that to you? Sustained. I don't. Are you aware of how much it costs to have a hard drive reconstructed? Objection, relevancy. Depends on how I'm much. I'm going to go ahead yours. and overrule it answer it. It depends on how much damage there is, and I don't know what the damage was. Okay. Give me an estimate. Oh, if it, then it costs okay, over 10 th grand. At this point, it's sustained, and let's no more questions in this area. Okay. Are you finished? No, I'm not. Not at all. Okay, well, I'm giving you another 10 minutes. And then we're finished with the cross-examination of Mr. Tottis, or Professor Tottis. Ten minutes. Did I ever say, no, you cannot just retrieve this one file? Uh, I don't recall uh, whether you said that in an email or not. Uh, we, got e we had email exchanges about it. I don't recall what they were. So you can't say that I flat out refused to have just that one file retrieved. As I recalled, when I made the offer to you, instead of accepting the offer and, and helping me help you get the, the job done, we had ongoing difficulties. Okay. Because I'll draw your attention the next to the exhibits where I, in fact, Why don't you I in fact give accept us the his exhibit. offer. Give, give us the exhibit and the page. Okay. And ask him if it refreshes his memory. I'll direct your attention to Exhibit 5. <clears throat> Page 21. Last paragraph. Further, OnTrack has informed me that they do not retrieve individual files, but would rather only do the entire retrieval in bulk. Your Honor, I request to have the entire paragraph read. Okay, and that would be I have already informed you? Yes. Okay. Well... What I will do is, why don't you ask a question? Okay, page 19. Um, Mr. Hey, wait, <laughs> I'm, in terms of page 21, what's the question? I, Your Honor, I was sorry, I meant to go with page 19. Okay, so we're going to strike everything in terms of 21. In 21? Um, no, I, that's fine. That's the relevant thing about they'll only retrieve one in bulk. But that wasn't... What, that what's was the question? Okay, my question relates to page 19. And it relates to the same retrieval aspect where it says, in okay, this wait, email that okay. you got, it says, in conclusion, I'll have on track, go ahead and send you a bill, and I will fax over a contract for you to sign, though I do not believe it is legally necessary um, to have you retrieve this data. I clearly accept your offer for you to retrieve what's this. What's the question? Do you understand what, what this is, that this is an acceptance of your offer to have my hard drive uh, rebuilt, retrieved, whatever? Okay, and Page let 19. him Because let he him sat answer. here today saying, I refuse okay. to do that. But okay. yet here it is. Let him answer the question. No, because... Are you, are you reviewing Exhibit 5, page 19? Yes. Okay. Okay, and let him answer, and please do not you interrupt see, him. You if see you where interrupt we are at the him, bottom. I am not allowing you any more questions, okay? Yes, sir. Specifically, uh, you wanted to use who you wanted to use to retrieve the material, setting the price they wanted to use. Uh, that's not what my offer was. My offer was I was going to help you. Since we're, we're an Internet law firm, uh, we had. Uh, Can you refer to that your offer? Because no all, more questions all in this he area. Said his it's offer was with. in these it's emails. Over with. I'm it's just over asking with. him to refer okay, me to where they are in the emails. Over with. Okay. 
This is all in emails, right? I understand. So that. you should be able to point to it and not paraphrase okay. it. Will you go ahead and explain? That's the beauty of email. Finish with explaining Mark. it, and you know I have been more than patient. I'm telling you, this is just a warning. If you interrupt one more time, I am cutting off this cross examination. It's a warning. So you better not do it, because I mean it this time. All right, Your Honor. Zach, your email goes on for several um, lengthy lines, and you'll notice at the end of that paragraph, uh, which is one long run-on paragraph, you're, you're talking about um, uh, things that you believe are legally necessary as personal service contracts and not less than $5,000. What you, what you had turned a simple effort on my uh, part to, to help you get your grade by getting a paper into me, you turned it into uh, some kind of mental contest uh, about whether or not you should um, uh, have something reconstructed. I don't know that you're, to this day, Zach, I don't know what was your problem with your hard drive or if you ever had a problem with a hard drive. I honestly don't know. But it's very unusual for a student, rather than help his professor try to get him the grade that he's looking for so he can graduate, it's very unusual for you to, to act this way. And later on, Zach, you did call me and you did apologize to me. And in fact, you apologized later on in, in various communications. And you told me that you were on a 12-step program and part of your obligation was to call me and to apologize. And I accepted it. And I thought we were back on even, absolutely even footing and even... <laughs> and your conduct today suggests to the contrary. What's the next question? I'm sorry. Um... So you admit that I, I go ahead and say, okay, you can go ahead and, and, and retrieve this file. No, you said you're going to give it to someone you want to give it to, not what I had offered. Okay, does it say anywhere in here that I'm refusing to let you do it your way? It doesn't say that. It said you were going to do it with on track. Okay, did you ever write back to me saying, no, no, we do it my way around here? I, I don't recall I would ever write something like that. Okay, no. but did you ever write back to say, but... Fine, let's do this, but let's do it this way. Uh, or no, you didn't. I, 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 relevancy, Your Honor. I, I, Did you ever follow up on I'm that? I'm going to go ahead and allow one more question in this area. I'm not sure, Zach, but I think you already had a grade by this time. Uh, I think you had already sent me your, gra your, your, your paper, and I had already get, uh, given it a grade. And this is coming after the fact. Uh, well... Actually, a grade wasn't was issued until December 2nd. Okay. It's this is question. October 10th. So at that point, um, no, this is, this is shortly after you've, as, by way of refreshing your memory of the chronology, class ends July 15th. You write me July 7th. You write the school asking for mine and Jessica's Section, emails. This is uh, counsel's, counselor's testifying for the witness? No, I'm just bringing up some dates because he clearly doesn't know the what dates. What is the question? Um, you never followed up on that because I'm, I'm establishing that grades, okay. grades okay. were still out. He's still doing this. So the question is, did you ever follow up on this email? I don't recall because I think on I think on September the 13th, Zach sent me an apology and Zach specifically. Um, can you can you show us that in the rather than just trying to remember it? Sure, it's uh, on page uh, Bates number zero 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 nine uh, of Exhibit five, and. There you attach. That's from September 13th? That's correct. Okay, but the letter we were just talking about was from October 10th, Mark. That, that's correct. Okay. So and that's, you let him answer some question. Okay. And what I'm saying to you is we already had received from you a paper sufficient for me to determine whether or not you were going to pass or fail. Because I had a paper, I graded the paper, I said, you're going to pass. And the question at that point was, were you going to be able to graduate from law school, I believe. Okay? So after I had already given you a passing grade, 
then you were then asking me to spend thousands of dollars to retrieve your entire hard drive instead of a single file. That's why I think it was not particularly relevant. But was it relevant to the academic dishonesty investigation that was going on? Zach, I didn't know an academic dishonesty investigation was going on. Okay. And you didn't know that I didn't receive my grade until December, right? Objection. Ambiguous. Ahead, let him ask. I, I don't know when they gave you your grade, okay. Zach. Okay, so you just like don't know a lot to of ask. things, You right? have two minutes to ask okay. your question, so um, this is how you want to spend it. Go ahead. Okay. One question I, I truly am curious about is, um, how do you sure, go it's from, relevant. Okay. How do you go from sending, him, send me, sending me an email to saying, where I say, I only have this draft, right? You recall that? And then you say, okay, give me the draft. And I turn the draft in, and the next thing I know, a couple of weeks goes by, and then I get a letter on my birthday from the dean saying, academic dishonesty investigation. Where do we go from you saying, turn in the draft to academic dishonesty? How do we get there? Objection, argumentative, speculation, relevant. It does relevant. call for speculation. I'm going to sustain it. One more, you have okay. one more question. Do you recall saying, turn in your draft? I told you to turn in whatever you had. Turn in whatever I had. That's in one of these emails, right? I don't know whether it is or isn't. Yeah, it is. What's the question? Okay. From there, when, when I do what you said, was that like a little trick or something? Turning what you have and then we're going to do an academic It's sustained and um, the time is up. So um, do you no. have any? You asked me to turn it in. Cross-examination is completed. And what so do you do? Cross-examination is completed. I turned in what you said. I Mr. turned it Coughlin, in. You said turn it in. Cross-examination is over with. I gave you your time. Do we have any redirect? No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Travis, you may step down. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Your Honor, are we yes, taking a break? Yes, okay. we are. Um, may I have one moment sure. to talk with the witnesses? Okay. Are we going to stay off? Are we still on the record? Yeah. Here? We can go off the record okay. now. Thank you. Wait. Just a moment. Don't say. We're back on the record. Back on the record. Your Honor, the State Bar calls Christine Smith to the stand. Okay. Under penalty of perjury, that the evidence that you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please be seated and state and spell your first and last name for the record. My name is Christine Smith, C H R I S T I N E S M I T H. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dean Smith. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, are you currently employed? Yes. Where are you employed? I am employed at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, the William S. Boyd School of Law. And what is your uh, position at UNLV? I am the Associate Dean for Administration and Student Affairs. How long have you been in that position? Um, since August, I'm sorry, since September of 1997. And can you just go into a little detail about what your responsibilities are? Um, I, uh, on the student affairs side, I supervise the offices of admission, the Dean for Student Advancement, Career Services, Registrar. 
I, um, on the administration side, I supervise the staff in the business operations management part of the school. Um, part of my duties in connection with student affairs is that I am responsible for student uh, honor code matters and I do an extensive amount of counseling of students as well. Are you familiar with the applicant in this matter? Yes. Zachary Coughlin? Yes. And how do you know Mr. Coughlin? Uh, Mr. Coughlin was uh, a student and a, uh, he is now an alum of the Boyd School of Law. I would specifically like to talk about three different um, topics regarding Mr. Coughlin. And the first one being um, uh, an academic disciplinary investigation that took place um, in the school, oh, actually, um, with, let me go back. Regarding emails between himself and Professor Trados, um, right in sep um, summer of I believe 2001, Zachary was enrolled in Professor Trados's cyber law course. Um, there was a paper due in that course. Um, Zachary had claimed that he had. Submitted that paper, Professor Tr uh, the paper for the course requirements. Professor Trados uh, had stated that he had never received the paper. There were emails that went back and forth between Zachary and Professor Trados. Um, uh, some of those emails were uh, determined to be unprofessional and. Um, the matter was um, sent to me, and I um, met with Zachary and spoke with Professor Trados and others, and I uh, submitted the case to uh, Philip Burns, who was the student um, uh, conduct officer for the university. At that time, the law school did not have its own honor code established yet because we were a new law school. And uh, all of our honor code matters were initially investigated by me to determine whether or not there was cause, and then I would forward them to the Office of uh, Judicial Affairs. In this matter regarding Mr. Coughlin, did you find that there was cause for a referral? I did. And what was the basis for that decision? Um, the basis for that decision, I, you know what, <laughs> Lynn took all my papers. Oh, so. Is there something that would refresh your <laughs> recollection? Um, but um, I, I had sent a letter over to Philip, and I can't remember since it was six years ago specifically what that letter said. So, um, can I direct your attention to? It, there's a wit there are witness binders in front of you. Okay, if you can look great. At exhibit uh, Exhibit 59. If you could turn to Exhibit Okay. Do you recognize this exhibit? I do, yes. And how do you recognize it? Uh, this is a letter that I wrote to the um, Vice President for Student Affairs, Rebecca Mills, and Philip Burns, the Student Judicial Affairs Officer. Um, both are at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And is that, are you, um, are you uh, referring to Bates Stamp page five? Yes. Of the exhibit? Yes. Okay. 
And was this the referral letter? Yes. That you were just uh, testifying yes. about? And I'd like you to look at page one of the exhibit. Yes. Do you recognize page one? Yes, that's a letter that I wrote to um, Zachary asking him to schedule a, a meeting with me to discuss the matter. And did a meeting actually Section take place? Your Honor, relevance. Did a meeting actually take place? Um, yes, we did have a meeting. And what happened at the meeting? You recall? I, I really don't recall um, specifically, but I can tell you that um, based on the conversation that we had, I was concerned enough that I then forwarded the matter on to the University Student Affairs Judicial Officers. Okay, I'd like you to look at uh, page two of the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize page two? Um, yes, that's an email that I wrote to Mr. Coughlin. And um, what were you requesting in that email? I was asking him to provide me with an explanation of the circumstances surrounding the sur submission of his cyber law paper. And if you turn to pages three through four of the exhibit, do you recognize those pages? Um, that appears to be uh, Mr. Coughlin's response um, to me. And um, at the top of the um, email, it states a date of 10 mm -hmm. um, Would it be fair to say that that was before your letter to the student judicial, judicial affairs officer? Objection, Your Honor. I don't see the relevance in this and why we're taking so much time to go bit by bit on what's what. You know? On October 11, 2001? Right. Um, the date on Mr. Coughlin's email to me was October 4, 2001, and I um, wrote the letter and sent um, it to Dr. Mills and Philip Burns on October 11, 2001. Do you know what happened to um, the matter after you referred it to um, those people? Um, you're going to have to refresh my memory with the exhibit, but I believe that um, Mr. Burns found that there was not academic dishonesty, but there was another incident that had occurred um, involving um, Mr. Coughlin um, dismantling a computer in the microphone forms area of the library and taking that to another area of the library uh, to use it for his personal use. And in that situation, um, uh, Mr. Burns did find that there was a code of conduct violation and he had Mr. Coughlin pay $100 restitution to the university. Okay, I'd like to discuss that matter in just a minute, but um, can you refer to Exhibit 53? Do you recognize Exhibit 53? Uh, this is the letter that uh, Mr. Burns wrote to Mr. Coughlin after his um, investigation of the honor code matter. Did you um, receive this letter at some point during the investigation? Yes. And in, in, do, do you know how, um, what happened after this letter was sent? Do you know? I don't recall. In connection with this this matter specifically? Yes. No, I <laughs> and is um Do 
did you have anything to do with the investigation um, conducted by Philip Burns? Not to the best of my recollection, no. Okay. Um, in, in both matters? Is it, did he investigate both matters that you're aware of? The uh, emails as well as the um, yes. computer? Yes. Okay. What I'd like you to do is turn to exhibit... And that is a seven-page exhibit. I, I'd like you specifically to turn to page five of the exhibit. Do you recognize page 5 of Exhibit 58? Uh, yes, this is a memo that I wrote to Dr. Mills and Philip Burns notifying them that um, Mr. Coughlin had disconnected the computer in the microphones room of the law library at UNLV. Was the computer that was disconnected for student use? Um, the Objection, Your Honor, it's, I don't relevancy. I don't Objection. see what's, what's the point at issue. What's the relevancy? We're talking about the computer. We already said that in the Overruled. application. The um, this particular computer was not for uh, general student use. It was dedicated specifically to the microforms area and it was for um, patrons, um, both students and the general public, to use when they were um, looking at microforms and using the microform station in the library. Let me go back and just ask you, is um, are the statements that you put in this memo, are, were they accurate? Um, were they an accurate representation of the situation? To the best of my knowledge. And um, what, what exactly happened in this instance? The best of my recollection, um, one of the law library faculty, Matthew Wright, had gone into the microforms room um, on the evening of October 11th, 2001, and noticed that the computer was not there. The computer, the mouse, um, the keyboard that they were not there, so um, he was concerned. And he went for a, a walk through the library to see if he could find it anywhere. And he found Mr. Coughlin in another area of the library using um, that computer and uh, keyboard and um, for his own personal use. Was Mr. Coughlin authorized to use that computer? No. Was Mr. Coughlin authorized to uh, dismantle the computer? No. Was Mr. Coughlin authorized Objection, to move the computer? What? No. Overruled. Okay. But what are we getting at? Why are we establishing this? Is what is why I'm objecting, Your Honor. Part of the um, charges in terms of lack of candor. But didn't we say the last thing with Charles? That's important because of how you reported it, whether you reported it or not. What's, what's important about this? My understanding is the, um, the State Bar is alleging that um, when the question was asked, have you been dropped, expelled, or otherwise disciplined by any school for any reason other than academic performance, you marked yes and replied, I was fined 100 dollars for the UNLV for moving a computer monitor and keyboard for an hour in December 1st. They are contending that there is some misrepresentation and they can prove they can try to prove their case. 
They're contending I misrepresented about moving the computer? No, they are contending that you did not give an adequate enough reason for why there was a $100 fine. That's the first I've heard of this. Well, you know, it's... Is that a, that's not in their pre-trial statement. Yes, it is. But let's um, proceed. Can, you, can we cite that? You can ask in cross-examination. You need to All be right. familiar with your case. If we have time, if she okay, keeps going at this go rate, ahead. we're not going to have any time What's for What's the next question? Um, Slow. Dean Smith, um, was Mr. Coughlin fined for, and I'm going to use specific language, in your opinion, was he fined for moving a computer monitor and keyboard 10 feet to attach a computer for an hour in December of 1st, 2002? I, I believe that without looking at Mr. Burns' letter, I believe that he was fined because he had um, violated the UNLV um, code. Um, and I, I'd have to look at the specific se section, but I think it had something to do with um, misuse of university property. And do you know what the $100, um, the, the amount of the fine, uh, strike that, let me rephrase it. Do you know why there was a fine of $100 in this case? I don't know why Mr. Burns specifically chose that amount, $100. I think it had something to do with um, the fact that staff time was taken to first of all, find the computer, and then to have to put the computer back in its proper spot. And then there were also some resettings that had to be done to the computer um, because the settings were off from what they should have been at that particular station. When um, you testified earlier that um, the law in uh, the library employee found Mr. Coughlin um, in another part of the library, can you explain where he was found, if you know? I don't know that I knew. I, I My familiarity with that building was that the microforms computer was... Um, in sort of a um, isolated room, and uh, the computer was taken out of that room and moved to another room in the library. Um, there, there, um, in that same library, very near to this area, was an area um, uh, for uh, student use, the student computer lab that was specifically for law students, and that computer lab had approximately 30 computers for student use. And so that was nearby, but that's not where Mr. Coughlin was found? Or, or was it? I, I don't believe he was found in the computer lab. I believe he was found in um, a nearby room in the library. ever do any independent investigation into either the um, incidents with Professor Tratos or the computer incident? Well, um, my investigation um, in connection with the matter in Mr. Tratos's cyber law class was that I spoke to Mr. Coughlin and I spoke to Mr. Tratos and I reviewed the email exchanges. Um, I didn't bring my notes from that investigation. I don't remember if I spoke to other students in the class. I, in, the, in the situation 
Um, with the library matter, I spoke to Matthew Wright, who was the law library faculty member who discovered that the computer was missing. I also spoke with Mr. Coughlin, and I spoke with one of our um, IT staff members, Donald Castle, and I spoke with um, Mr. Burns. Now, I'd like you to turn to Exhibit 18, please. Okay. Exhibit 18 is um, a, actually, it's a three-page exhibit because there's a front and back to one and two. And then Exhibit 3. Do you recognize Exhibit 18? Um, this is a State Bar of California form, which I completed and signed and returned to the State Bar of California. And... Um, Um, under number two, the question is, do you have any reason to question the applicant's fitness for admission to practice law? And what did you check under that? I checked, I checked yes. And what was um, your reason for checking yes? Um, my reason for checking yes was that um, I, um, throughout Mr. Coughlin's uh, law school, uh, career, I suspected that he might have a substance abuse problem. In meetings that he and I had together, I had... Objection, speculation. Overruled. I had recommended that he um, might want to see someone at the University uh, Student Wellness Center, and I had observed throughout his law school career several um, instances of erratic behavior. Um, the, there were other situations besides the situation with Mr. Trados and um, Mr. Wright. Uh, there was um, some problems with his submission of his writing requirement paper with Professor Jeff, St Jeff Stemple. There was another matter in connection with his um, enrollment in uh, Associate Dean Mary LaFrance's intellectual property class. There was um, another matter in connection with um, his employment in the law library. There was another matter in connection with um, his treatment of staff members in the law library regarding returning overdue books. And I seriously questioned um, his character and, and his ability to um, be a lawyer and to have clients. Can we go into just a little detail about each of these instances that you um, just Section discussed? Your Honor, relevancy. Why don't we... Go, why don't we Recall the incidents okay. and then ask more okay. questions. Um, Dean Smith, um, you mentioned something about an IP class taught by Dean LaFrance. Can you explain what um, the infra or the behavior was by Mr. Co Coughlin in that matter? Um, in that hearsay, um, overrule. In that circumstance, um, in the fall of 2001. Mr. Coughlin had enrolled in Professor LaFrance's intellectual property course. He had enrolled in that course because the matter with Professor Trados was still pending. He wasn't sure if he was going to pass that course. He took Professor LaFrance's course in the instance that he might not pass Trados's course, and then he would still have enough credits to graduate in December of 2001. 
school started in late August. Um, he did not attend class until October 4th, if I recall correctly. Um, I believe that uh, he came late to that class, according to communication from Dean LaFrance. Dean LaFrance had um, contacted him and asked him to provide an explanation for his um, lack of attendance because she did have an Junior attendance policy. Professor LaFrance had an attendance policy and he had already missed several classes. Um, the um, result of, of that whole matter was that she administratively withdrew him from her class, but in the process of that happening, um, he had sent at least one email that was unprofessional and rude. Objection here, sir. Um, overruled. And then I believe the first uh, incident you mentioned was um, something with, and I'm not sure if I have this right, Sten Stemple? Or? Ste Professor Stemple. Stemple. Can um, you explain that situation? We have a requirement at the law school that each student um, prior to graduation, its graduation requir course requirement must complete a substantial writing project, must write um, an article of uh, publishable quality. Um, Mr. Coughlin had submitted a paper to Professor Stemple. Um, Professor Stemple had determined that that paper... Objection, Your Honor, relevancy. Uh, Your Honor, um, if we're going to go into all these, uh, can I go into the Anson matter that we didn't we didn't bother to bring up? If you want to, if you want to okay. muddy the field and bring more and more of your conduct into this hearing, that's fine. Okay, it's not working. Just for as you. long, just as long as we're not going to ignore the Anson thing, okay? Because you forgot to mention it, Christine, and go into okay, the five other okay. things. Enough. Sorry, um, could you continue. Um, Mr. Coughlin had submitted a paper in fulfillment of the writing requirement to Professor Stemple. Professor Stemple had communicated to um, Mr. Coughlin that there were substantial deficiencies with that paper. He had sent him a memo that outlined the deficiencies and, and asked him to uh, rewrite the paper addressing the deficiencies outlined in the memo. And... Um, uh, the, it took um, several weeks, possibly even months, um, for um, that whole process to be completed because um, he was in an email exchange with Professor Stemple uh, in what I would call, you know, just disagreeing with the the quality of the paper and whether or not it fulfilled the Just writing requirement. Say. Um, this is not going to the truth of the matter, so I'm going to um, overrule the objection. And then um, if we can just talk about his uh, Sorry, employment. Sorry, you overruled the objection? Yes, because it's, expl it's not for the truth of the matter. It's to explain her opinion oh, okay. as to why she was concerned about whether you should be a lawyer or not. Hey, Go Smith. ahead. I apologize. Um, if we can just discuss um, Mr. Coughlin's employment at the law, law library. Um, you mentioned that that was something that also caused you concern. Um, I, I believe that the law library faculty could Objection, Your better Honor, address. Is, the, is this hearsay when she's quoting all these other people? I don't know. She, we haven't allowed her to finish. I know. Okay, but in previous answers, she said, "Well, Dean the France told me, and so and so told me." And the problem and is, is hearsay is only if it's going for the truth of the matter. This is to explain why her her opinion is that you should not be a lawyer. Okay. And so in the last situation, she's explaining it because I there was a paper due, and I had Mr. some discussion Conklin, about what was supposed to be in the paper. Quit interrupting. And then, okay. Act like a lawyer. 
So what's the... I, I'll just make this brief. Um, uh, were you aware of uh, Mr. Coughlin's, any of Mr. Coughlin's conduct at the law library? Yes. And, and can you tell me what you personally knew of? I was notified by uh, law li library staff of a couple of incidents. One incident involved um, Zachary taking money from a cash box. Another incident involved um, Zachary having books checked out of the library. They were overdue. A library staff member called him to tell him they were overdue and request that they be returned to the library. And he um, swore at that staff member. And there was another...